and uh, welcome to live stream number 26. Oof, I uh, I almost uh, came late to uh, to my own live stream this morning. It's a little bit earlier than I normally do this. Hang on a second. Needed that. Um, thank you so much for joining uh, today's live stream. Really appreciate it. Just gonna wait a couple of minutes, and we're gonna get a uh, a few people in here to uh, today's topic. Today is all about Cam. Today we're gonna talk about uh, the tool library inside of Fusion uh, 360. So if you're not into Cam at all inside of Fusion 360, um, you know, take 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 the day off. So it is uh, Thursday. It is July 13th, which is awesome. Really appreciate it. I can see we got a couple of people coming in here. We got Seth. Good morning, Seth. We got Carl. We got David. Really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your busy day to uh, to join this uh, short uh, live stream here today. Now, as always, down in the description area is my email address, lars.christensen at autodesk.com. You're more than welcome uh, to send me any topics that you would like me to cover here on the live stream. Today's topic is uh, one that Matt uh, kind of like uh, pinged me about the other day, talking about tool libraries, and also wanted to know how you can uh, you can share them. So that's what we're going to cover today. I am going to jump into uh, into to the chat in a little bit. I can see that we've got a, a bunch of people joining here. Really, again, awesome. You guys are awesome. Uh, I will jump into the chat uh, a little bit later, but let's jump into what we're going to talk about today, what is uh, is these tool, uh, tool libraries inside of CAM. So... A few things I want to uh, to cover today. First of all, um, the easiest way to access the tool library, if you're switching over to uh, your CAM workspace, is up here. There is actually a tool library button right out uh, here. Sometimes, and I think I'm guilty of that too. I actually have another file open here. I don't know if you remember, do you remember this data set? Maybe some of you guys have not seen this data set before. This was a, uh, a webinar I did on Modern Machine Shop. Uh, maybe I don't even know if that's on my YouTube channel or if it's over on Fusion's YouTube channel. But I have a tendency sometimes if I got to go and look at a tool is that I go into the exit operation and then I right click and then I hit edit and then I go and get the tool. What is kind of actually silly because you can just access the folder uh, right um, up here. Now, right now, uh, as I'm opening up this file, you will see that there's already a bunch of tools uh, in here, let me just get back to my open document. Um, in here, you'll actually see that it's pulling in the tools from that file, and then my open document here that is empty. So, just to take you to for a quick spin inside of the CAM tool library, because they actually enter changed a couple of things in the late, re, latest release. First of all, you need to be aware of if you're a brand new user that it's kind of like this little button up here that will um, show or not show uh, this folder structure. And this folder structure is important because this is kind of like your different sections for, um, for your tool library inside of, uh, of CAM. So um, if we just kind of like work from the top and down, first of all, you would have like a documents folder. And what that means is whatever whatever documents are open right now. So right now I'm in untitled because this is an unsaved document right here, right? And you will see there's nothing. And then you will see underneath that I have that CNC table. Well, that's that other document uh, over here because I had already, I'd already programmed some things in this document, um, in, in, in this data set. So you will see those uh, across as you're working here. So just, I just think that that kind of like narrows down the confusion sometimes because you're looking and finding out where things are. Now, then you will see that I have a folder called cloud and there might be a chance that you don't see that one right now. And if you don't, it's because, well, it's pretty easy. <laughs> you just have to turn it on. Check this out. If I go out here and I hit my name and I go into preferences, then over under cam, you will see that you can choose to en enable uh, cloud libraries in here um, if you want to use it or not using it. What, is, what does that mean? 
Well, it means that if I go back into a tool library, by default, you have a folder called local. And local is local is what I think local just means. It's locally on your computer that your, your cloud library is just saved locally on your desktop. So your tool libraries will not be out in the cloud. They will be locally on that specific machine. Now, so what does cloud, what does that mean? Well, it did something that I think actually was, was pretty neat. It, it used to, in the beginning, it, it wasn't working great. But what the development team did uh, was that they placed it. If you, and now I'm going to go out to my, you know, your data panel where you're saving all your different files. If you go out to the root and you scroll down to the bottom here, there is a folder that will appear. If you have that enable cloud libraries checked in your preferences, again, that is your name and inside of preferences and under cam. If you have that one checked, then this will appear in the data panel. And in here, you will see that you can, you can save a couple of different things. You can save your, your posts uh, on the cloud. You can save your templates on the cloud. That's another thing we should talk about in another live stream. And then you can uh, save your, your tool libraries. Now, why would you consider saving your tool libraries on the cloud instead of uh, locally? Well, um, when you log in to Fusion 360, you have a login, kind of a, a, an Autodesk login, right? So mine is my email address plus a password. When you log in, um, everything that you have up on the cloud is associated with that login. What that means is that I can go over on Seth's computer, and if I log in with my credentials, then in my data panel, all the files that I've been working on are there, all my settings and everything. It's, it's like, yay, awesome, right? Um, I, I, that's one of the things I just think is, is awesome, that I can go across the country, uh, halfway around the world, I log in with my credentials on somebody else's computer, and there's all my files and everything. But if you don't have the cloud libraries activated, then I wouldn't get my tool library that I have, have built up in there. So by using the cloud function, putting my library up there, my library are now accessible in that ROM. So I hope that that makes sense. Now, Matt had a question about how do I share this library with multiple users? I'm gonna to get to that in just a second. Hang on, Matt, if you are online. Um, so let's jump back into to, uh, Fusion. So that's what that means. Um, back into to the library here. So um, besides that, so that's the cloud. Besides that, you have a samples folder and you also have a vendors. And then, like I said, again, you have your local in here. And you can copy from uh, different from different aspects uh, in here. Now, so to create new tools, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Because when you're starting out, you know, you're looking uh, in here and you say, all right, I need to put some tools in here. Um, you know, you got to create your, your tools. And I've had people asking me uh, for my, if I would share my libraries with them. And it's not that I don't really want to share it. It just doesn't really many times make sense. Your, your tool libraries should really resemble what tools you have in your shop or at your machine. It shouldn't be just some kind of like a, a, a random somebody's uh, setup. The way that I normally do it, and, and I'm not saying that this is, this is the best way to do it. I'm just saying this is the way I normally do it. Um, so you can go up here and you could click up here to say you want to create a new tool. So for example, in my uh, aluminum milling folder, if I want to create a new tool in here, I could click uh, new mill tool and um, this dialog box will open up where I could now specify uh, all the different things I want for that specific tool. I'm going to come back to this in just one second. Um, but what, what I like to do is, oh, by the way, you will see the way that I have split my folders down. And this is, by the way, the same on the cloud as I have on my local. You can see it's actually I just copied them up there. Uh, the way I have done it is I have done it by, by materials. So you will see that 
Now you might hear thunder in the background right now. Ooh. <laughs> um, you will see here that I have uh, material. It's pretty good thunder coming in here. Um, I have alloy milling. I have alloy turning. I have aluminum milling, turning, and so forth. You will see that I have, I have like split my folders down by materials. And the way you create folders is just right click um, somewhere in here. And uh, you should be able to just create a new folder, can you? New tool library. And then new tool library, that gives you a new folder. Now you could call it whatever you want. Now, this is important. I did it by uh, materials, um, but it really depends on, I, this is, there's no rules, right? Um, I, I used to program, uh, as you, some of you guys know, I used to program this eight palette Matsura that had like 219 tools in it. Um, that one had its own tool library. Like I just literally called it uh, Matsura 300 uh, because when you have over 200 tools, then you kind of like need your own kind of like library in there. So that's kind of like depending on how you, you want to do it. But I like to break it down uh, by uh, materials in here. Then when I want to create a new tool, what I like to do is I'm actually just using the sample library over here um, because the sample library over here will let you kind of like filter down. So if I go into sample uh, library, um, in here and I might just say alright I'm gonna just grab you know uh, in stainless and it will show me all the different tools that is already in the sample now what you can do is you can you can filter down up here by either operation or by by type so I like to use this dialog box a lot so for example if I'm looking for a half half inch end mill you hit flat end mill here and hit OK and then it will show all the ones in the sample and then when I find that half inch end mill, I will just literally uh, do a copy tool. So either by, you know, right click or control C, whatever you prefer. And then I can go to my new library, but back over here. So that was the sample I just copied and I can paste it in here. And now I have copied that sample tool into to my library. Then what I do is I go in and edit the tool. And this is where all this of course becomes extremely important. And then I fill all this stuff out. So I will go in here and you can see that you can say, all right, so this is a carbide end mill, coolant or no fruit, coolant through the tool, all these things, number of flutes, uh, whatever your tool really is. Um, and you, have, you, can, you can actually modify the shaft of the tool. You can go in and put in uh, holders. So if you select holders, you will actually see the entire whole library uh, that is in here. There's a bunch of Mari tools in here. Great guys. All kinds of different uh, holders in here. And then uh, feeds and speeds uh, are in here. And I just got to say my normal spiel when it comes to, uh, to, to feeds and speeds. So when it comes to feeds and speeds, um, it's not necessarily a magic number that is just pulled out. I know if you're new to machining, feeds and speeds seems like a little, you know. This is how I go about it. I know that there's a bunch of, of calculators out there uh, and there's formulas you can use and stuff like, stuff like that. This is where I recommend as a new user where I would say you should go. Start by creating a good relationship to a... Uh, a tool uh, provider, so where you purchase your tool. I know that it's tempting to go on eBay and search for the cheapest cutters or Amazon or something like that. But if you uh, contact some of the, you know, even it doesn't have to be the biggest uh, tool companies out there, even smaller vendors, a lot of them will help you with the feeds and speeds. And the reason that it's important to do that is I like to use the analogy with Haas machines. If I have a Haas VF6, it's like this huge machine with 50 taper, big end mill holders, a lot of horsepower, or I have a Haas um, mini mill, which is this small little cute machine, uh, same same company, um, and but the two different sizes of machines, two different sizes of horsepower. One machine can take big, you know, has a lot of, you know, 
power in it. The other one is a little wrinkly machine. So you don't have the same rigidity. Uh, so you, on the um, on the big machine, you can take a lot bigger chip load. Like you can take a lot bigger chip with it uh, than you can on the smaller machine. And then there's how you hold on to the part. Like your work holding, is it flimsy you hold on to or is it rigid? And you're clamping down to the table. There's so many variables when it comes to feeds and speeds that I guess my point is that if you create a good relationship with your uh, with your two providers, and if some of you guys in there, if you want to share, you know, who you use, <clears throat> you know, uh, for other people would be awesome. Um, or down in the comment area, if you're watching the recording, would be absolutely, you know, great. Uh, share the knowledge. Um, but th they will help you with coming up with the feeds and speeds, and they will stand behind their tooling too. So I have tried where somebody recommended me some feeds and speeds, and then the end mill broke, and... That kind of sucks, right? That was like a $50 end mill that just snapped. Well, because I used their feeds and speeds, because I was had a relationship with them, they just replaced the cutter for free, right? So that's kind of like where the difference is between just, you know, trying to save a few bucks versus, versus that. So feeds and speeds, get them, start from a starting point with um, with your, your tool provider, whoever you buy your tools from, and then, you know, take it from there. All right. And then in the end, the last tab here, there's also some post-processing things. And be aware of this tab, um, because if you have, for example, um, people have asked me a few times via uh, the comments in YouTube, you know, what if I don't have a tool changer? You can actually flip a switch in here, and now it will stop uh, between every tool change, so you manually can change it. Or if you have one of these cool uh, probes on your table, you can check this one, and now it will always go down um, and check for uh, if the tool either broke or maybe got pushed up in a collet or something like that. Um, you can you can go and check. And then what I'm talking about there is this brake control would be a device uh, like like this one over here, uh, right? Like a tool probe like that. It will go down. Uh, it will go down and check that. So if you have that. Um, this brake control check, uh, then every time you've used that tool, it will come down and, and make sure that it, it's still there. All right, let's speed this up a little bit. Um, so that is kind of like how I would work with, with bringing tools in that I will, uh, that I will add my own things in here. So take a sample tool, copy it into my own library and then I would fill uh, all these things out. Now, one thing that is kind of nice that was added in a, in a current release is that you can, you can add in here your vendors, but then you can actually also add a, a project link. And what that means is that if I go into, for example, my aluminum milling here, and uh, let's see, maybe right now I got my filter turned on. Uh, maybe if you're going to look at this ball end mill, let me go ahead and edit it. One second, um, you will see that I actually I have the, the, the name of the vendor, the product ID, and then I have a link that I pasted in here. What that means is that when I'm looking at this Athen, Athens ball end mill, if I click up here on the product link, it opens up on another browser. That product link can actually take me right out to, uh, this is a Lakeshore Carbide, they can take you right out for your uh, your reorder. Ha, I think that is pretty nice. So that happened, um, you can see the link uh, is sitting right up here. And the way you get that link is by edit the tool and just paste that URL uh, inside of this field here and it appears uh, up here. So that that is, uh, that is super dandy uh, to have. Um, I don't think I'm going to cover much more in here in regards to to this, but this is how I kind of like do it. I break it down into uh, what I'm using. And then, you know, as you, as you are um, machining your first parts or as you are doing feeds and speeds and you're finding out that this works really well, go back in the tool library and tweak the settings in there so you have... So you know the next time you're pulling a tool out of your library, and this is why I think it's important that you uh, you create your own library for the tools you have and what works for you, is because when you when you build this library up, 
you're gonna have like you know these feeds and speeds works and these settings works and you don't have to like that's not your big fear if you, if i share with you my tool library you might find that you know one of the tools just you know the feed and speeds are way off for what you're doing and that would be be a lot worse all right i'm gonna jump in and unless i'm forgetting something i'm gonna jump in and talk a little bit about what matt had asked uh in oh there's another thing i wanted to show that i think is important <laughs> see i can't i can't remember that is this button up here renumber tools and what i mean by that is so i just quickly here like when there was two i said i was almost late to my own to my own meeting here i just threw a couple of tool path on uh this part here right so there was a probing operation done here there is a a um adaptive and then i just threw a finishing tool path on here look at this adaptive you see the tool number in here t223 i mean that's obscure right but it is not because again like i said before i used to program a a, a machine that had two over 219 tools in it so some tool numbers can come up there and be you know really high um as you're programming things so there's a neat trick to to reset that so you get it in the right uh, right order. So if you go back into your tool uh, library in here and I go up to the documents where these tools are, you will see here's the tools. There's a couple of other operations inside uh, of, um, of that whole setup. But you see here's my tool number 223. If I right click in this space or I click this button up here, I prefer probably just to right click inside the space there is an option to renumber tools. And if I click on that, then it would actually come up with this little thing. And you can actually choose uh, like uh, where you want to start and the increment and all that stuff that you, you can check out these own uh, settings yourself. But if I hit OK, it just renamed the tool. So that 223, they're now in the, in the order that they are used uh, in here. So that is, uh, is extremely uh, extremely important now um, also there's another function in here that is extremely cool and that is this one here called Re remove unused tools um, you know if you have never seen this one you might just uh, smile when you now know that that option is in there because many times when you're programming in here you start using different tools and then you decide that no oh, you know what I'm not gonna use a half in end mill I'm gonna use a free quarter or you know, what about this other tool? And you can end up when you're programming with all kinds of tools in here that is uh, not really, um, not really used. And that's a neat way to right click and remove that. And then you can clear that up. All right. Uh, I'm going to check the chat just in a second. I can see there have been a bunch of activity in there, which is absolutely awesome. Um, but let me just talk a little bit about uh, Matt's uh, question. So Matt asked, you know, so cool, we can do the cloud libraries like I talked about, but now when I'm logging in again on Seth, if he's still there, um, on his uh, computer that I can now access my tool library. But what if I have a shop uh, of, of more than one guy? So we have three or four guys in the shop and we want to share the same tool library. Um, how do we do that? Um, well, for that, there is actually another function to uh, it's just funny with this thunder going on. I'm just waiting for the power to get knocked out here. Um, with um, There's another option, and that is to use Fusion Team. Now, this is something that is fairly new, and I'm not going to dig too deep into it here, but I want you to be aware of that that exists. And that is meant for people uh, of a shops or, or places that has more uh, than one user. So like I said before, your login is assigned uh, you know, to your workspace. So all the things you see over here in my data panel right now, that is all stuff that I have created on in my workspace, right? Um, but if I go over here to the dropdown, there's actually something you can switch hubs. And hubs means to uh, other, kind of like other sections, other um, uh, kind of like platforms, I guess. And if I switch here to a, um, I was going to, uh, we'll save it. Well, let's not let's don't save this one. But I'm switching hubs. I'm removing myself from my login and I'm now joining over 
to um, a, I would say, a company uh, place. So I'm getting, you will see my whole thing now looks different over here. Now it's it's a little confusing because it, it's also called Lars Christensen. This would probably be called your company name. Um, but what is special about uh, Fusion Team is you get a couple of more options than you do uh, normally in your normal uh, workspace that you now can actually invite people uh, into your workspace. Um, so you can, you can have project members that can then invite other uh, contributors into um, your company's shared hub. Uh, you, can, you can now control, you know, people can view it or they can, they can modify files. And also in this team, in this team hub, you can also save a, um, a shared um, tool library that everybody on the shop floor, floor, shop floor could, uh, could use. Uh, so it looks, it's a, it's, it looks kind of like the same as, you, as you've seen um, what you have on your own, but what it gives you is, like I said, it gives you an option to go in uh, and invite uh, members in here and you can give them like different roles. So this is more like for a, a company. And in here you also have a, uh, a, um, a tool library that then everybody could kind of like uh, type into. This is something we could definitely talk some more about. Uh, I actually think I have at some point, um, but the easiest way to learn more is go to Fusion 360, I think it's Fusion Team. Let's see here, Fusion Team. So fusionteam.autodesk.com uh, and you can learn more about uh, this, this thing. So this is meant for companies and there, there's a, a, there's a 30 day trial that comes with it. And then you have a price per user uh, that, that uses this. So kind of like a little bit of a more col uh, collaboration kind of place. So I think that that is, um, I think that that is, is important that you know about, and it makes sense, right? Like when we're using Fusion as an individual user, it's your stuff. Like whatever you create and install up in the cloud, that's yours. Well, if you now go and you work for a company, you want to share that workspace, but it's got to be, you can't just share yours because, you know, what happens uh, if somebody leaves the company or, or, or you adding more users and things like that. So that's where Fusion Team is awesome because it's kind of like more like the company's uh, kind of section. So that so that makes sense. All right. That was kind of what I was planning on showing. I hope that this was somewhat useful. Uh, let me just go in and see because I can see in here that there was some really cool activity today. we got 38 people in here right now. Uh, and I just want to make sure that um, that I just, there's no questions in here. So I can see Spike. Hey, thank you so much for joining, buddy. Uh, got Kyle in here. Um, uh, question about a uh, Linux solution for Fusion 360. Uh, Lean asked that. Not what I've heard of, uh, but again, I'm not quite sure. Like I'm pretty far down on the, <laughs> on the list of what, uh, what's, going, what's going on. Like I'm normally joking around that, you know, if you asked the bus boy in a restaurant, if there was nutmeg in your dish, that's kind of like where, where I am. You probably wouldn't know. Uh, but I don't, I haven't heard. I think, I think right now keeping it on a Mac and keeping it on Windows is, is, is pretty cool already. Um, all right. So I can see that there's a lot of, uh, of questions in here. So, all right, I am going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to waste anybody who's watching the recording here. Um, sit through this too much. I can see does cutter plus holder provide enough information for collision detection. Yes, absolutely. Um, the collision, this may be something we can do in another live stream too, because I'm coming up in a half an hour. But yes, collision detection is something that is really cool. Um, and there is actually also, if you get into like your free access tool path, you can actually get avoidance too, what is, uh, what is, is pretty neat in here. So I think I want to stop here. Um, just again, I appreciate you guys taking the time. You guys are awesome. Um, and I'm going to do like I normally do. I am going to stop the broadcast or so anybody who's watching the recording and I want to jump inside of the chat. Now tomorrow, 
uh, is at 2 p.m. So four hours later than today. It's 2 p.m. Eastern. That's where I am. And tomorrow we're going to talk about threats. I'm going to try to pronounce my threats. Uh, uh, it's one of those weird hard words for me to say in English. Uh, so you're going to hear me say threats a lot tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk about threats because somebody challenged me a little bit um, and, and was trying to 3D print some threats um, and, and got some weird results. So we just got to look into that a little bit. So that's the plan for tomorrow um, at 2 p.m. Eastern. Again, Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to join this. If you're watching the recording, uh, down in the description area is my email address if you want any future topics for the live stream. All of you guys who took the time to jump in here and watch it live, you guys are the best. Uh, I will end the broadcast and I will see you in the chat. Until the next time, have an awesome, awesome day.